What's up, listener? Real talk. Busy week. It's 11.41 p.m. I just got home from Sunday school, and I'm recording all the ads for the next two weeks because everybody's going on vacation and having holiday time, and I, you know, we're going to give everyone their time off, so we're, we're banking these all together, so I'm banging them out tonight. Thank you for being just a big part of my life. It's weird. You guys are a big part of my life. I hope I'm a big part of your life. And thank you for listening. Thanks for making the choice to turn this on this week. I, I have so much gratitude for that. We're still setting all my tour dates, both American and international. So it would really mean a lot to me if you could sign up for my text list or my email list. Um, they work internationally, both of them. Um, yeah, it would really it'd, it'd be super cool. And if you want to support the pod, think about donating $1 to the Patreon or buying a piece of merch or um, coming to a live show um, or telling a friend or leaving a review. And check out my other podcast, Chosen Family. That's with Elaine and Joy and Mac and Jemmy. It's fantastic. It's really good. And then this week on the podcast, we have my friend Connor Janda. He runs the Boys Club podcast with Nico Carney that I just did. A great comedian, incredible writer, and just a good guy. And we get into uh, being a gay man who is not as into penetrative sex. So basically lesbian sex. But that I guess that's up for that you guys to decide. Um, ha ha, tee hee. That could be offensive. He gets into his preference for not having as much penetrative sex as a gay man and how that affects his dating life and stuff like that. It's a really great episode. He's just so sweet. Connor is a sweetie, okay? So you go and DM him and follow him and go to his show in New York because he's the kindest guy. All right, this is a meandering long opening to this, but that's where I'm at. I am meandering at 100 miles an hour. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Um, so thank you for th those of you who are, are along for the ride. Uh, yeah. Okay. Enjoy. This is my crusade in this world is to make sides a thing. I just do not need to have penetrative sex. And I'm just like waiting for the rest of the community to like get on board. I love eye contact and I will make out with you until the cows come home. And I love to be naked. And I think right. everyone should come. But I think we also deserve to eat dinner. And I'm like, let's <laughs> eat dinner. <laughs> the body is always making poop. It is always making poop. <laughs> I'm a little low energy today because I have a sinus infection. Oh, no. Don't worry. Not do you know what did contagious it? or anything, but do I know what did it? Yeah. So guess what fucking happened? This year, my New Year's resolution, I don't know if I've shared this with you, was to be more serious about my health. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I have this thing called the Ehlers, Ehlers Danlos. Do you know about it? I've heard of it. From I've TikTok? Been on the Wikipedia. No. It's like uh, there's lots of different things, but basically you're just a stretchier person. <laughs> Your joints are more oh. loose. Your skin is more stretchy, elastic. It actually helps you. Wait, yeah. that's why you look. Yes, I'm ageless. 16 years. Younger. Yeah, yeah. My mom, my mother, I think also has it. And my mom's 75. And you would have no fucking idea. She's ancient. Wow. Okay, I went on a date one time with this man who like looked really tan and like Greek. And then he's like, yeah, I'm actually like Irish. I have a disease that just darkened my skin. Wow. And it looks, makes him look hot. And I'm like, you have, hot, you have the same one. Well, like I do. Hot. I have, I, I, it is weird because on the one hand, what a great disease to have or disorder or thing. I don't even fucking know. Blessing. Cause I'm, I'm, I technically, I'm still going through the diagnosis yeah. process, but everyone's ba at this point, all the doctors are like, oh yeah. You're just like, oh my God, I'm so flexible and I get no wrinkles. <laughs> but the thing is, I also have chronic pain. Oh no. <laughs> so that's the one, that's the thing that really, that sucks about it. But then when I got the sinus infection, I went to the doctor, new doctor. I have all these new doctors and just really trying to take care of myself. Because before, I don't know if you've had this. Have you guys seen doctors that you hate? I have yeah. a horrible doctor story. Yeah. Yeah, I had a horrible, yes. So I absolutely. was seeing a doctor that I hated and then he made me cry on the phone recently and I was like, fuck this. This is my year of health. I found a new doctor. I went in, you know, she, I get chronic, I get sinus infections. I just, she, it's already better. Yes, I know. Yeah. Also, she's so mommy, dude. She's so mommy. I'll never see anyone but a female doctor. Yeah, never yeah. again. Or at least Sorry. never a male doctor. Yeah, no, well, like, that's how I feel about that. I had that with therapists. I had a straight male therapist and then I was like, oh, this is self-harm. Like, this is <laughs> a waste of money. Well, I loved Fred, R.I.P. 
Oh my god! Other than him, <laughs> <laughs> this man was no Fred. Let me tell you. You saw you saw my solo show. You yeah. know. R.I.P. Fred. We love you, Fred. Shout out, um, my therapist since I was four. But other than Fred, I've really had some negative experiences. Mm. And I came in, she's, this woman is so mommy. She like touches you on the arm and she's like, how are you, dear? I can tell from your droopy eyelids that you're having a tough time. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my please God. hug me. And maybe I'll nurse from your bosom or something. <laughs> um, but she's, and then I told her I had this sinus infection. I was like, yeah, I had a surgery a few years ago. I get them all the time. She's like, well, yeah, you have EDS. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, because of the way that your cells are, it affects the um, cells in your nose and shit and your sinuses. So you can't clear as shit out as well. I'm just a snotty person. Whoa. Yeah. And my mom gets it, too. And I, I just can't believe my old doctor never picked up on any of this. That's crazy. There's it's- so much that can be wrong with us. Like so <laughs> yeah. many specific things. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah, to be like uh. a, like, just like a meat machine flesh sack like it's yeah. amazing meat that anything works at all sack. you know what it i mean is it is a miracle have you thought about ears it's a fucking miracle it's a it's a millions mile long little coily tube filled with hairs <laughs> in your fucking head and then doom 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 it makes like noise like the things come in here i think that every time this is you're gonna be scared of the subway now and we all should but i think every time i'm on the subway i'm like we are just brittle little things that can be taken out at any time by a giant piece of machinery <laughs> yes it's, it's so to be taken out so true We're mortality like, is definitely on my there mind there are animals with like exoskeletons like how poorly designed we are that all the soft stuff is on the outside. And then we have a hard like sticks in us. Like <laughs> does, put that on the it outside. It really does make no sense. We have no, we're so, like if I flick There's you, it'll hurt. There's nothing else designed like, in the world that's soft on the outside and hard on the inside. Nothing. No, what a, yeah, what a horrible design. <laughs> Listener, write in. How would you redesign our bodies? <laughs> <laughs> I would give us a hard exoskeleton like an ant. Yeah, they, they have that right. Exoskeleton, yes. And then I would like fix our spine. We're not meant to like walk upright. We our should. spine is like not. It's like hasn't caught up. Like it's not the optimal spine yes. to be walking upright. It's still like an all totally that's spine. So squatty like, potty, exactly. Yeah, squatty or, squatty potty is huge. Squatty potty is big. Do you squatty, have a squatty potty is huge. No. News. Oh my god, Wait, dude! Is a squatty potty a bidet? <laughs> <Was a squatty laughs> potty? And if not, it should be a bidet. Squatty potty is well. It's really. It's silly that it's a brand because it could be two books, but a squatty potty <laughs> is where you just put your feet on something so that when you're, when you're on shitting. the toilet, because oh more of our bodies are not primal position. We don't poop correctly. We also Wait. don't give birth correctly. We need a squatty mommy. We need a squatty, <laughs> squatty Yudi. Oh, well, yeah. I thought you're supposed to give birth squatting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a giraffe. Or just like, or the like baby's just any supposed to, like, other hit the ground. fucking animal. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I taught high school when I was 22 years old for a year and it was only a year because I was so bad at it, but I was very stressed out and I was constipated the whole time, but I could not poop for a year, but on in the bathroom. <laughs> Those damn kids keeping me from pooping. The, literally the only thing the department of education ever did for us was give us a poster in the bathroom that just was like yoga positions to do on the toilet. So I'd be like on the toilet, like doing yoga. We positions. can't stop school shooters, but, but here's a if you're feeling con- a constipated, imagine seeing that in the bathroom while you're hiding from a school shooter. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried a warrior two? Like, have you tried a warrior two? That's what the world feels like right now, though. Yeah. Every like the suicide and depression and anxiety rates are like through the roof for the first time ever. The biggest source of injury for children is not sickness or like a physical injury. It's like mental health. Oh, jeez. And yet all we have is an Instagram influencer telling us five different ways that we can, you know, de-stress yeah. in the moment. And it is funny to have like to see culture meet in the middle of like wellness language, but also like not solving like very, very real problems. You know what I mean? Like yeah. meditating through the climate apocalypse. I'm like, this is like yeah. not good. I like, do, I do existential dread meditations. There's like a real, apparently that's a real, like, I don't know if disorder is the right word, but like a diagnosable thing of like the existential dread of climate change and how Dude, that's I, like the, the mental toll it. of people that are like, I can't fucking handle it. No, it's I, like, why would you be able to handle I'm, it? I'm for whatever reason, the the I worry about the youth. I worry about the youth every fucking day mm. and climate every day. Yeah. I'm like, it's October. It's 65 degrees out. Horrific. It's, it's insane. Yeah. Welcome I to the show. The cat. Thank you. Are you Catholic? Catholic? No. 
No, Jewish. I think Jewish. it's a Catholic thing, but also maybe a Jewish thing. I feel like I just grew up with a strong awareness that it was all going to end. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's very Catholic. It, they're like from day one, they're like, you're going to die. So behave yourself. <laughs> so like all of this is like, well, yeah, we were always going to die. I guess, it's true. I guess that's true. Catholicism, Christianity is yeah. very much overshadowed by the idea that he's going to come back and there's going to be hell to pay. Yeah. Yeah. And the he, the emphasis on the he, it's like God is a man. <laughs> and he's going to come back. And he's going to be pissed. Gonna Dad's be coming home. And if he <laughs> finds this place a mess, you're going to fucking hell. Yes, God's I mean, coming back and literally. he's fucking drunk, dude. <laughs> and he, and even Dad's like, had a real long eternity at work. Okay. <laughs> and he is pissed. You've been gay. <laughs> and also, and also my two brothers. So I have two gay brothers. Everyone's gay. All of us are gay. But I feel like in... Oh, yeah. we're Catholic. We're in the apartment. We're having gay sex. We're having gay sex with Connor Janda today. Comedian, writer, podcaster, boys club podcast. I did it a few weeks ago. Woo! That was a long delay. Yes. That was my bad. I held oh. down the button. We have a new soundboard. Um, but anyway. Connor's here. We yeah, had thank Maddie, you for being here. We had you a few weeks ago on boys club. Oh, you did. It was it so was fun. Well, Such great a fun pod. pod. Yeah, really yeah. great pod. Everyone should check it out. Yeah. <laughs> And it's you and Nico Carney. Yes. Talk, tell everyone about the pot a little bit. Okay, just so, so people go, go check have, out these that, I'm looking into that. Or Whatever no, I'm, you I'm looking at you. I'm looking at God. And <laughs> Boys Club podcast with Nico Carney, who was on this f a few weeks ago. I don't know when this comes out. A few weeks ago. Um, and we just let him dive into boys clubs, which is, um, they're everywhere. Um, and it's anyone with power who is using it in a bad way. And including like, <laughs> including myself sometimes and probably both of you so <laughs> oh sure listen yeah. to boys listen to boys club podcast and uh we get to the bottom of a lot of boys clubs and you're uh, it's interesting because you're a gay man yes and nico is a trans man yes so it's like a little bit of a spin on what what boys club means yeah and we yeah. okay so we started it so we were both just stand-up comedians in new york and, and we like spotted each other across the room of like a very like a straight comedy bro <laughs> hang thing it was like Queer, queer. And then so we were like, okay, we have to like do something together. And yeah. then we like started by doing a live show at Club Coming. And which I've done. Fantastic show. Yes. So I'm good. You. I've done it too. And then so you're well. like, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's, it's a good show. It's, <laughs> it's a good genuinely show. so good. There's a lot of gay people there. Um, and then that like led to um the podcast. But yeah. They say they say comedy is a boys' club, you know. <laughs> I feel like we should introduce ourselves. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we're in the apartment, we're having gay sex. Uh, Connor, copy the format. I'm Ashley Gavin, cis gay white woman. She, her pronouns. Guys, I just booked Salt Lake City. What else? There's a Phoenix. I'm coming back to Phoenix. Lots of stuff. AshleyGavin.com. Get sign up for the text alerts. And then, as always, you know that little that little nerdy kid in the corner that has a big old crush on their dikey English teacher. <laughs> It's Maddie Wiener. Hello. Keeping me from getting canceled. The hall monitor. <laughs> I'm Maddie Wiener. Gay virgin. <laughs> anything else? I'm Weird just eyes. Just I anything didn't else come up with a great. <laughs> oh, here's one. Here's one. English. More like cunnel English. English. <laughs> She's not having it. Maddie Wiener. Hello, Maddie Wiener. Uh, she, they, gender under construction will be updating as the story unfolds. What's updating right now, would you say? Updating right now uh, is she, they, fluid in between non-binary, but also feeling a little like a lady sometimes. You, feel, you do feel ladyish today. Today's a little bit more of a lady day. Yeah, today's not as much of a mask day. Yeah, yeah. lady day. Um, bisexual pending, you know, official approval from the board because I haven't slept with sure, women sure, yet. Sure. And also comedy. <laughs> the board is just <laughs> a bunch of TikTok lesbians, TikTok bisexuals. <laughs> um, and what's your Instagram and all that? Maddie T. Wiener. My link tree has everything. 20K. Let's get Maddie to 20K. And Connor, do you mind introducing yourself with your gender pronouns? Anything, yes. anything that you want people at home to know? Connor Janda. Connor with one N. Janda is Panda with a J. And then pronouns he, him. And then my Instagram is at Connor Janda, C-O-N-O-R-J-N-D-A. One Entry. N. One N. That's the, that's the tricky part. That's the, that's the part that really does throw people off. One N because we're true Irish. We're American, but like true Irish. Yeah. Uh, sure. Have you been? Yes. Yes. My parents are very, my mom is hundred percent Irish. and was very like, we have to go reclaim our roots. Where did you go? Um, Dublin and Doolin, which are different places. Whoa. Do you, Do you know Doolin? No, I didn't even Doolin know Doolin is place. a friend of mine's last name. 
they they own maybe own a town in Ireland and, and it was <laughs> spooky spooky. Um, Why was it spooky? It was spooky because it actually was probably the safest place in the world. But it was like I was like went for a jog there and which felt like a weird flex that I just did. But I was like on a jog on family vacation, you know, disordered eating. And I was just like <laughs> jogging it out. That is honestly, if you work out during a vacation. That's the bar. That I don't know how people do that. Cause I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty right. Yeah. But if I'm on a vacation, if anything disrupts my life, the first thing to go is the working out. Yeah. I think that's healthy. I think it should be the first thing to go. Like, for but sure. it keeps me so, keeps my brain so happy. I went on a run today and literally I was like, I never need to take medication again in my life. I mean, that's not good <laughs> advice. Don't follow Isn't that. It so but it's crazy how much of a difference it makes. It, it might not actually be bad advice. There's so much statistics my, about how, how good for you exercise is as compared to, of yeah. course, some people like really need, like listen to your doctor for yeah. sure. But my also therapist run. was like, we want you to run before we even try medication because like that's how powerful it is. It's so powerful. It's I'm sorry, I cut off your story though. No, but it's funny. You're running through Ireland. I'm running through Ireland and I was like, there's no one here at all that is sold. They're not a human like that, which is like farmland. And I was like, I feel so unsafe. Like I could get- Maybe that's because abortion's legal there. And that's (laughs) in the sphere of people. And it's like, wait, this is actually the safest place in the world. But to me, it's like, if no one's, if you're in New York and no one's around, go inside. Something's wrong. (laughs) The apocalypse is coming. It's bad. It's super bad. It's so true. And then Dublin was fine, you know. It's I've been, fine. I've been, I, I, my roots are also in Ireland. Ex- yeah. uh, Do you know where Jewish in Ireland? Part. Yeah. So I've got like, I've done the ancestry and then I Googled, Google map the ancestry. <laughs> Wait. So like I pinpointed, I went and looked at all the churches because Ireland's so cool in that way. You have yeah. hundreds of years old churches that you can still go and see yeah. that your great, great, great grandparents were, you know, married in and stuff. Uh, do like either that. of you guys have any living family there that you like met up with? No, I haven't done that. We didn't meet up with them. Cousins, what? cousin Maureen. You didn't <laughs> meet what? Oh my God. I've never talked about this on the podcast, but I have a great aunt Maureen and she's like shunned from the family because she's gay. Oh. Whoa, what? Wow. Yeah, my great aunt Maureen. Wait. What? But why, how did that work with you? With me? But they just shunned one random gay person from the So family? like, obviously. Sorry, I, that was, the, but I, I was just so like. So obviously Irish. Yeah. On my grandmother's side, there's 4 million kids. Yeah. And she has like all not these- Ir- Irish, but Irish, not Irish Catholic. Probably Irish Catholic, mm-hmm. but like the religion is gone. There's no religion in my family. Like none. Yeah. So my grandmother married a Jew. Mm. So that's my Jewish quarter. Long story short, my great aunt Maureen lived with a woman for a very long time. Says they had separate bedrooms and stuff like that, but never got married, no kids. And like my whole family would like make fun of her and call her crazy aunt Maureen. That's so sad. Yeah, and I was like, crazy Aunt Maureen's gay. She's not crazy. She's just gay. That's Wait, so sad. Wait, do you sad. have alcoholism in your family? Of course. That's why I don't drink. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, on both sides. Because I have no gay ancestors, but so many alcoholics. And I'm like, do you <gasps> think that we just needed to have like a like a coming out? Oh, thing? my God. Yeah. Some, per, some high percentage of like the alcoholics in your family are, are actually just gay. They were just sad. They, they were, were just, just closeted sad. and sad and like drinking it away. Now, when I would be closeted and drink, I would come out, black out. <laughs> so I don't know like what was preventing them from doing that, but like, yeah, lots of drunk closeted people. Well, it's sort of like I heard from someone recently, a comedian about an older comedian died, no family, would book, he became like a booker and booked like all these young queer people on his shows and like seemed to really like take them in. And it's like, oh, this is an older, an older queer that like could never come out is the, is the thought, yes. you know, I obviously don't want to out these people, but like you look at these elders with no family, no yeah. marriages, you know, taking oh, in all so these sad. young queers. I think that freaks young gay people out so much. Cause then you're like, oh my God, do we not have, what does our future look like? Well, it we're to be sad. Did I, mean, I make it sad? Wait, I made it sad. No, I mean, no but it's like, but it's also like, I think that is such a sad outcome that it's like, you're like, oh, I don't want that to be my yeah, yeah, yeah. life. Like, well, we've just come so far that those people are living. Yeah. Like we have those elder queers that are like, you know, God, and, that must and be hopefully like, now, hopefully now, you know, we're going to have families and, yeah. and tell, be able to tell those stories. And that's something about being gay. That's like so unique is we've talked about this briefly before, but like, it's very you can't go through a family lineage to find your, mm. to connect with like. You're not born queer. into your community. Yeah, you're not yeah. born into your community. I have a joke about this. <laughs> in some ways that's good because it, it's helped us advance so quickly because we pop into every community. 
we're born into every That's community. That's so funny. And yeah. every Republican family then has to make a choice about whether or not yeah. <laughs> they're going to support gay marriage and turn into a libertarian instead. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas other things like race, they don't, it, you don't get that same benefit of just being in every family. Yeah. Born into every family. Wow. That's really interesting. Yeah. I had a voice teacher and when I was like 17 years old, this was like right after I started getting blackout and then coming out and the voice teacher who was straight, he was like, do you want me to introduce you to an older gay person? And I was like, fucking ew. No, that's so sweet. I know. And now I'm like, wait, that's really kind. Like you were talking, you were like, do you want me, do you want this person to show you the, like the ropes? And I think part of it was like, so you can visualize your future because oh, otherwise that's you're so sweet. Just a sad 17 year old in boat shoes who says he's gay. And like, <laughs> does make any sense? And you yeah. were like, ew. I was like, absolutely not. Ew. I know. Listener, are you listening to our Patreon exclusive, You're Having Gay Sex? Well, here's a sneak peek of what you missed last week. I was married and in a polyamorous slash ethical non-monogamous, although it's spelled monotonous here. (laughs) 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 Ethical non-monotonous relationship. But they're non-monotonous. So you know things are exciting. (laughs) That's right. You don't know what the fuck is going to happen in this marriage. We are (laughs) non-monotonous. No, we only date each other, but it's crazy. (laughs) (laughs) There are four bonus episodes a month of this this series, You're Having Gay Sex, on our Patreon at the $10 tier and then two at the $5 tier. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Well, I have a fun story. I had gay sex this week. Yay. Um, so something really cute happened to me. Oh. I had a show on Sunday. And usually when there's an attractive lady person in the crowd, mm-hmm. I, I notice them. And uh, I hope to speak to them. This is so funny. You're so flustered because you're talking like an eighth grader. You're like, um, lay woman. Like you're talking like a, like an I funny rage comics, like a lady person, (laughs) not to be random, awesome sauce, but a lady person was there. (laughs) What are you describing right now? Oh, is this a generational gap? Maybe. Is of like, like two thousand, do you know what I'm talking about? I do, I do. Shouts out Rage Comics. <laughs> What's like Rage, Rage Comics? Comics? It was like early internet memes, like 2000, I don't it know. It was like- uh, nine, I, I was on, oh, 2009. I was already done. Yeah, it was these like weird stick figures, but their faces were pretty yes, high but It's just kind of like yes, yes. cringe famous, early internet. Yeah, the most famous one When I think like of early a, internet, I think of pre-YouTube. Oh, this yeah. This was kind of pre-YouTube. Maybe it was- I remember these. YouTube, it was- I remember these. Pre-like YouTube star. Yeah. How old are you, But Connor? probably the most- 28. Okay. So I think that one of the guy going like, foo, or it never even all, it was supposed to say fuck, or I like, guess. But forever we lonely. Just fuck. So long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fuck. You probably would like recognize them if you saw them. I know, this I know what you're talking about. might be me being like chronically online as no, a no, teenager no. thing. I think you're right, but- I anyway. The point was I was calling the point you a weird is, nerd. <laughs> this girl was at the show, but I didn't see her there. She actually DM'd me after the show, and I saw it when I was on a date <laughs> with Main Main. Main Main and I have a fun little open thing going right now. Mm. We're very supportive of one another, which is right. really nice. But I opened it up, and obviously, I'm not going to reply to a message from a girl. So the alternative while- is, you, it's on red. No, I didn't accept it. I didn't, okay, I didn't want to yeah. leave her on red. Yeah. That is a nice thing about having like, I guess it's from when you're like a business account. You can read the full message, but it's not read yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't leave her on red. I thought that would be rude. Next day, I'm going through my messages because I check them every day. And I'm like, oh, where's that one from the cutie from the show? <gasps> Did you send it? So I'm going through. Oh, I saw this on your story. Yes. And I was like, oh, the chaos. The, I, she fucking unsent it. <gasps> so then I was like, okay, well, fortunately, I remembered her name <laughs> because I carved it into my arm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just remembered her name. Wait, I feel like we, this woman had a mental breakdown. No. I unsent it. Yes. So if what happened? I send a message, I've had a full anxiety attack. Oh, a hundred percent. I've fully gone through. I've had a- th- Yeah, so what are the steps? If I've you want to send a message, people. because I have not slid into a, a woman's DMs and unsent. So I don't know how this feels. How does it feel? I feel like you're anxious similarly to me. And I think you're not. I think like- I have fucking issues, dude. 
But, I think that you'd be like, but you're like anxious and in charge, and I'm anxious and a victim. <laughs> yes, yes, we are <laughs> a victim of the world. Absolutely, yes. yeah. I've, if I'm if I unsend a message, it's because I've like called five friends and fully Had a spiraled. Yeah, yeah, a full spiral. And every minute that you don't do something about it, it feels more high stakes, and also yes. is a higher likelihood that they've seen the message. And then you're like. It was just like those two things together. It's, it's like, mortifying. Source not explode. Like you're upset about climate change, and I'm like, have you ever unsend a message? <laughs> <laughs> and then also like you unsend it, and then you want to message them and be like, did you see the message I unsent or not? Because I wait, maybe <laughs> if it's weird that I unsent it, then we can talk about it. <laughs> hey, by the way, literally no worries. <laughs> literally no worries. All good. I also forgot to say that I am wearing a Bottom Nation T-shirt. I feel AshleyGavin.com. We're huge. having GaySex.com. Real Tops wear Bottom Nation merch. Okay, Real Tops or Bottoms. Okay, so that's going to be my gay thought for the day. But <laughs> Is I that was, new? Real Tops or Bottoms? Yeah, I made that up. Just oh, now? So yeah. Oh, I feel like you could really run with that. I, I know. It's a good campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hashtag really Real good. Tops or Bottoms. So I, <laughs> but Real Bottoms are Bottoms. <laughs> And real bottoms might just be sides if they really thought about it. <laughs> they wanted to start eating again. Maybe sides. <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying tops for bottoms. Like it's a top. The shirt's a top, but it's for bottom nation. That also works. Wow. Okay. Would have cut you a hot girl sends message. Yes. She sends a message. She unsends the message. I go to slide into her DMs. But what happens is Instagram has a fucking bug because the messaging system on Instagram is total shit. If you work for Instagram, please fix this. It's really bad. It's so bad. So I go to message her and it says, accept, reject, block, you know, the whole thing when someone goes, yeah. but there's no message. So every time I hit accept, it goes to populate. Now I'm talking in computer science terms, but it goes <laughs> to populate the messages, but there are no messages to populate but there's some bug where it thinks there's a message because she unsent it. Whoa. So every time I hit accept, it then regenerates the accept, decline, block, or whatever. Dang. So I cannot message her. You have like, to make a Finsta to message this I'm going to have to. So it's I, Ashley. It really is Ashley, I swear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I know, but then that looks like one of those spam things. I was like, it's Ashley. The podcast is going under. I need you to send me $500 <laughs> right now. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. Patreon.com slash WHG. Wow, the horny knows no bounds. Horny and computer science, what a combo. Um, That's computer science to me is making another Instagram account. Wait, did you actually make <laughs> it? Women in STEM. I know you really, women in STEM, I know how to make a second Instagram Wait, account. Wait, you actually did that. So what I ended up doing is I asked my friend Sam if he would DM her. Um, because I thought that would be cute. That's what friends are for. Yes, and we're Instagram living this whole experience because I can't not make content because I'm sick in the head. Uh -huh. Send help. So, but then I realized, then she came into the chat while we were Instagram living. She was uh, watching this happen. So then I was like, you should come into the chat. Like you should come into the live. And that's when I got nervous because I was like, I didn't remember her face from the, like, I've never met this woman. I didn't remember her face. I wasn't sure how I would feel about her. You know what I mean? Yeah. She comes into live after all this and you're like, ew. And just leave. <laughs> you just remembered it was like her face was net positive. <laughs> Like it was like kind of hot. I don't, Maybe. I didn't remember her and I knew her Instagram, but like, it's different to see someone on, sure. you know what I mean? It's like a dating yeah. app. You're like, please, please, please let me be attracted to this woman. Please, please, please. Yeah. Wait. Yes. So I was like, oh my God, I really hope this is so high pressure. She's meeting my best friend. And was she into all the like strangers. public funny? So she's a yeah. songwriter. Oh, cool. so she has some public whatever. And she came in and, and she was very attractive. I was like, Okay. So yeah. And then she was like super cute and we started texting and uh, yeah, we should be probably going on a, a date next week. That's so cute. I, I'm really, I'm very like a little flustered that I'm talking That's about our first this. queer dating show was your Instagram live. That was like the most successful queer dating show we've ever had ever in history. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was one, one time, but it was um, Prince Charming. Do you remember that finding Prince Charming? No, oh. Good. it was only for cis white gay men and it was really bad. So there was, a, the, I thought there was a, was that was it called some of the men were straight, but others were actually gay. Cause that's that was a super problematic so... show. <laughs> no, and I loved but it. That sounds that's horrible. so funny. I, was, I don't I mean like, that's funny. We should do it again. I just mean it is funny that yes, that was made. That was what we thought progress was. That's to insane. To have some straight men and a group of gay men. Jesus Christ. On a dating show. And the outcome could be, I mean, they're fully lying to this man. And it came, of course it did. It came down to one gay man and one oh straight God. man. And like, thank God the gay man chose the gay man. And 
you know, I'm psych. I'm yeah, straight. But like, wouldn't that, isn't that just like crazy? What? That's a real show that existed. Yeah. Yeah. That's so sad. Well, this was just, <laughs> this was like Christ. the bachelor, but there was just like one guy who was like dating 10 guys. And it's like, well, why does that guy get to be the one? You know what I mean? Like, like really, <laughs> theoretically could be any of you. What's so great about him. <laughs> Wait, well, what, then the question is, will they all start dating each other? Well, that's, God, the, the behind the scenes must have been insane amazing i think that the, a queer dating show needs to be just like bachelor in paradise where it's just like a bunch of pop people pop people without like an end goal mm. like no end goal i have i have a show called les island that i'm trying i would like to pitch and it has a similar instead of like there being a go, there's tops and bottoms yeah that's how that you divide the gender there's no yeah. gender there's just tops and bottoms and you can switch but if you switch the person has to accept your switch yeah 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 otherwise you I think that we deserve that because I think that it's fucked up that queer people can't develop the type of internet fame that like bachelor people can get mm. where they just like sell at home Botox kits because they went on this show. They and get it's like, what so about us? famous. Yes. Like, stu like are they, yeah, it becomes their entire, like, yeah. they don't have to work. Well, they only have a few years of it and then they're done. And then they're, yeah. And then they wrinkle. And, and it's, it's sad. Over. It's actually sad to watch a bachelor, a famous bachelor star wilt. Yeah. Into regular existence. I really. And then they sell real estate. <laughs> that's so dark. In, that in, is what every in Dallas. And if you sell real estate in Dallas, I think that's incredible. I think that's an incredible <laughs> existence. You are one of our real estate selling Dallas. Or if you're a realtor in Dallas, we love you. We see you. You are boring, but we care about you. <laughs> Wait, my favorite big brother. I hate this. My favorite big brother from 2005, six cast member now sells real estate in Minnesota. That's and what I, they do. I, That's what regular people do. And she do, was Connor. like MAGA, but really liked gay people and also Black Lives Matter. So like she was bad, but also like less bad. So she just know. wanted to get rid of abortion. She was, you're, wait, you're literally right. <laughs> she actually sucks. Actually, she sucks. And I'm sorry. Ah, uh, I miss, I miss my rights. Connor, did you have a gay sex this week? Okay. Wait, I practiced answering this question so many times. And I'm still gonna answer it awkwardly. No, and I didn't want to. <laughs> no, and that was my choice. Um, no, I went to, and then we did it. Wouldn't it be? It'd be weirder if it wasn't your choice not to have sex. No, I completely agree. Someone just chained you in a basement and was like, "No sex for you." Well, that's actually week. we were talking about Barbarian. That's actually the plot of Barbarian, more what? or less. Oh, is, the horror movie Barbarian. Spoiler yeah, alert. It's kind of that being chained in a basement and then having no sex. Oh no! Only no, quite sex. the opposite. Oh no, you're right. Right. Well, you described it as my dream, actually. That's my dream. <laughs> to be chained in a basement and, and not, not touched. <laughs> and not touched, like in a sexual way, not touched? I don't know. I thought, okay, so I listened to this. This got so deep so fast. I, we were literally, we moved from, oh, I didn't have gay sex this week. I might be a touch me not, and it's the hottest thing on the planet. This is also, chain me up. Also, put me in a basement. I, feedback I get, I don't know what I want. So you're totally right. Um, I, I feel like I... <laughs> I Dash Turner talked about this. Well, he said it a little bit different. He's like, says that he's like low libido. I don't think I have low libido. I just do not need to have penetrative sex. And I'm just like waiting for the rest of the community to like get on board. See, mm. this is what lesbians have discovered that the rest of the world needs to know. It's so confusing for men. I'm sure it's just as confusing for yeah. some gay men, not all gay men. Yeah. But like, it's just, it's really not necessary for so. Now, sure, there's. I don't want to say dicked down, but I'm sure there's some lesbians and queer femmes and stuff that they just want to be dicked down or dilded, dilded down, dilded to the ground, dilded, dilded sounds like dilded sounds just like a absolutely dilded, destroyed, did dis dilded. It sounds like a company that's going to be like, we are the modern solution to fracking. And it's like D I L D <laughs> period. <laughs> dilded. Yeah. Right in listener. What does dilded make? Is it an educational sex toy company? Dill dead? <laughs> Dill dead. Dill dead. <laughs> anyway. Um, oh, you're saying that lesbians know that you don't have to. Oh, yeah. Like, penetrative sex Sorry, is I'm a little tired today. No, no, that's okay. No, that's okay. But we've discovered you really don't need that much. No, and I think Or the beautiful. penetration just, it really, there are some women that are so into, we've not talked about this on the pod, but there are some women that are just so into light penetration. Just mean? barely in penetration. Yeah. Mm. Not light in terms of the size, but light in terms of like no, how the deep size it goes. Too. Yeah. Like you really only need. Are to you talking about f***ing? <laughs> I'm talking about <laughs> internal f***ing. Like that's teasing. That's borderline external. Yeah. Like mm. Yes. Yeah. Completely. Yes. I'm pro-teasing. 
Have you had sex with women? Oh, no, no, no. Or people of all Well, gay men would say teasing the whole. Yes. So like teasing the whole. Yeah, teasing teasing the whole. I feel weirdly dirty saying I feel so, (laughs) It's so weird how I do this. The sign behind you that says we're having gay sex. I know, it's so weird how I have this podcast and some things I'm like, oh, I can't talk about this on the air. (laughs) But my friends, I have a lot of friends who are queer women and who are like, yeah, you are kind of like a lesbian in that way. And yeah. then I love eye contact and I will make out with you until the cows come home and I love to be naked and I right. think everyone should come. And what's wrong with a little mutual masturbation? <laughs> I think that's the best. And I think like that is, I'm here for that, but I think we also deserve to eat dinner. And I'm like, let's eat dinner. <laughs> and here's what people like, I, and this is my mission in life. Like this is my crusade. The body is always making poop. It is always making poop. Like on Survivor, <laughs> they don't eat food. It is always making poop. Thank you. <laughs> like on Survivor, they eat like a cup of rice and half a coconut every day. They're still shitting in the woods every day. Like the body is constantly <laughs> doing that. So like you can't just like you never a hundred percent can have anal sex and know that it's a hundred percent not gonna end bad. No, and, for like, sure. I mean, I put hot. fingers in there and I'm like, this is risky business. Yeah. I've been I've visited. <laughs> You visited? I've been, I've had tourists. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, it's what? been a while. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm so <laughs> mean to you. No, it has been a while. Yeah. I've <laughs> almost I'm, not a big like ass per I'm like one just, Did you say ass pro? No, person. I was gonna say person, then I cut myself off. I'm not an ass pro. Ass pro shop. <laughs> it's a fish with a gaping asshole. <laughs> Instead of where the mouth is, it's a it's a it's just a gaping asshole. And it is fascinating ass that you do pro shop. Can somebody make all of the all of the camouflage is uh flesh colored? <laughs> Sorry. Get on that and ass gilded, pro. I think you can get rich. That's got to be a thing. Sorry. It should be a thing. Can you quickly Google, is Ass Pro Shop a thing, Alex? And we're talking about Bass Pro Shop, right? Yes, that's okay. what I'm yes. talking about. Ass Pro Shop or Bass Pro Shop? Ass Pro Shop. All right, we'll see if what comes ass, up. If Ass Pro Shops are not a hat, we are we are doing that, that would merch be right great. now. <laughs> no, I did not mean Bass Pro Shop, Google. <laughs> I meant, uh, yeah, there's some hats. Oh, and damn. Some, uh, some fun little other people. Oh, that's what I was thinking. It was too good to not have been taken. Yeah. Well, that's unfortunate. Such is life. Do they look popular? Uh, I wouldn't say <laughs> that. Openly steal them? No, parallel thinking. <laughs> it's parallel thinking. It's the same line. It's parallel thinking. <laughs> Who do you think would, what would Ask Pro Shop be? I think that would be like Duck Dynasty gay men. That's what yes. I think too. It's, yeah, it'd That's be like bare kinds of guys like going yeah. in to get their ass professionally eaten or whatever. It's anal beads mm. on a fishing line that you reel out of them. <laughs> <laughs> when they go to get bait, it's actually just a bunch of twinks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need in this world is more twinks. Um, great. Okay, wait. So, but so you like whenever I see, I was thinking this the other day. Cause it's like very unique to the gay experience to be like, our butts are so important. Like there's no other person like in this world community, like they use uh, it, but I feel it's not. Like, I feel like butts are pretty dominant in the straight community right now. But they are neglected by straight men, like their own butts. Like have you seen those Reddit threads that are oh, like, male my butts. boyfriend won't wipe his ass because he thinks it's gay. And so now his ass has like shit. In- I've like seen, there are yes. Reddit threads like that that are like, my. Are you saying like, among we'll men never the ass is neglected? Yeah. yeah. Like when I see like Cis men. a hot couple on a hot date and I'm like, they're just going to simply go home and have, they're like eating tacos right now. They're going to go home and have sex and it's going to like all work really on the bachelor when they have like dinner dates and they go <laughs> fuck. And then I'm like, wow, then they're just going to go have like beautiful sex. And like, what a unique experience that is. Cause like for gay men, it'd be like, we're not going to eat food normally and then go home and like normally fuck. Like that would be insane. Like that would be like once dinner is in the Am body, I- it's done. Am I stupid? Like, I really don't know anything about this. No. Is it not. as much work as you're making it out to seem? I think it's just like it is co- con- consistent work, is what I would say. It's consistent. It's work. consistent. Like, it's like a consistent thing that you have to be like mindful of. And then, yeah. And I don't know if this is like the eating disorder girly in me, but it's like my stomach is freaking uh, civil unrest. So like <laughs> it never feels great down. It was just like, it's never just chill. Like I, said, I don't have a low maintenance stomach. Um, 
So yeah, I think it's like particularly bad. But then with that being said, so I was like, wow, your, all of your my- stomach is like the D the whatever zone in Seattle that they had the past. What was that? Or in Portland? Where, where was it? Like the Alex, you must know this. What is this? The the zone in Portland or Seattle. Oh, where yeah, like, the, the Chaz or whatever. Yeah, the like the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. Yeah, the Autonomous Zone. Wait, it's the MAGA thing? No, no the opposite. A, during the opposite. Black Lives Matter. It was during they, the, uh, the, the They like kicked the police the out of like one neighborhood. And oh, that like, was cool We're though. People were giving this. each other groceries and oh, stuff. Yeah. Nice. Like Kid Nation on CBS in 2006. Yeah. That? <laughs> <laughs> because that's very niche. That's your, but that's your stomach. That is my stomach. And then so I, what I've realized is that the, the easy answer to that is, well, then be a top. But I've like simply not. And it was like, if I could just be a top my whole life would make more sense. Everything would be easier. But I'm just like literally not. I'm just not. So like. But I think, side. I mean, like, I think there's also a, mis- a connotation that gay men are only having anal sex. And what I've heard from most gay men is like, no, nah, that's like a special occasion yeah. because of what you're describing. Yeah. At least the gay Completely. men on, that I've had on the show. No, I think that's beautiful and refreshing. And I should. DM all of them and be like, all right, <laughs> let's get married. <laughs> let's go. I feel like I was in a relationship recently where he became really fixated on anal sex. Okay, here's the problem though. So the night that I meet him, I tell a lie <laughs> because I really liked him. So we you're like, this- I only want to have anal sex and I will bottom every time. And that is all I want to do. I was like, I fucking love anal. I love the butt. So no, he, we go on this date. And then after he says that he's a bottom, He's like, I mostly bought him, which was a lie because he only bought him. And then he's like, what are you? And I was like, oh, I'm mostly taught because in my head. It just I was came like, out of your mouth. It just said it. And it was like, isn't it funny how lies like that can happen? Lie. <laughs> and then months later, you're like, it's too late to go back. <laughs> I'm a top now. <laughs> I was like, I'll just make it work. I'll just make it work. I'll just figure it out. I was never a good top. Now I can be like, this is the, this is the, <laughs> I'm, I'm 28 years old. No time like the present. Figure it out. <laughs> And then in this, I realized like, no, like that is just not like, it's just not like if I was a straight man, I don't know what I would do. I'm just like, I wasn't meant to thrust my hips in that way. And yeah. I'm, what? Okay. I'm just I'm, a I'm, bad top. I'm going to ask you a personal question. No, I came on this for your topping. Questions. Yeah. I literally looked at his genital region as I <laughs> no, said No, please. That. I didn't wear I, any shorts I'm for so nothing. I'm <laughs> sorry that I did that. <laughs> no. But I'm literally, I'm trying to picture the scenario. You're Pitch, topping. Picturing me You're naked. inside him. Yeah, for a really short period of time. And when you say you <laughs> don't like, I just love giving once so much. Once it's in but I there, guess. it's just stuck. <laughs> like once it's in there, it's just like, it can't leave, but it's supposed to leave. It's not supposed to just stay there. But like, I'm like, no, it can't. It's stuck. It stays there or it's done. Is it psychological? Like, well, you speak about Reddit threads. So like the internet would tell me that it's psychological. The internet would tell you, but what about internet. your therapist or in your deepest my, heart Well, my hearts? therapist is like, hey, sex should be fun. And it's like, okay, well. Thanks, Haley. <laughs> it's really not. It's not fun. That's I mean, it should be fun. Yeah. She's right. You should follow the fun. Thanks, like Hales. improv. Yeah. Sex is, is improv. No. Yes, Wait, and. also, it's funny they say that because you know what I was really- Can I get a suggestion? We're a teacher and a student. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking, why is it always pineapple? Like whenever you do UCB, they're like, can I get a suggestion from the audience? Pineapple. Okay, fuck off. It's always pineapple. This it is, is just for my improv heads fruit out there. or like a strange, inappropriate, problematic power dynamic. Like you just said. <laughs> like something that's going to be not okay. But I was also, I did improv in Chicago and I was very, that to me was psychological. And then I was, that made me very anxious. And it was like, oh my God, I'm so in my head But right do now. you just get soft? Like, it's just, it's just, it's not as hard as it was when it went in. You know what I mean? <laughs> that is it's, so wild to me because yeah. it's got to feel good in there. It's feel. Isn't it, sex amazing? That's such a so weird. Fun. Coming is amazing. Yeah. That's how I feel. I feel like I always, I have a joke about it where I talk about trust being relatable. And I do always need to say that coming is amazing. Cause then I'm worried that people are gonna be like, are you asexual? No, I wouldn't worry about that. I'm obviously not up at night worried about that, but I would, <laughs> I wouldn't want them to miss understand what I'm saying. Totally. And because like, there will be people that write in the comments that yes. you might be. Exactly. Be like, favorite, I think one of my favorite things about this podcast is we get like one sentence and then 400 comments <laughs> diagnosing <laughs> what is wrong, quote unquote, or like the sexuality or the romantic, romantic orientation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people will be oh, in no. the comments trying yeah. to figure out what's going on yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Okay, well, and you're I welcome might need to that. because it increases the engagement. But also I, know that it's kind of inappropriate. But you're welcome to. Do you but think it's kind that of I'm inappropriate. asexual, a top <laughs> who's having stress, a bottom who should just not eat, or <laughs> or actually 
a side who should just be more validated by society. When you and say a side, do you mean like, what do you mean? I've never you, heard that before. It's just like oral. N- j- uh, Jay Jordan mentioned it on this podcast. So, oh my God. <laughs> like two weeks ago. I listened to all the gay men that were ever on the podcast. I would like Jay literally Jordan? scroll through on, it. It's like, which my... gays were on this? Yeah. And he, he said mentioned, side? He meant, I don't think he has a side. He brought it up though. And I was like, okay, visibility. Wow, I missed it. Because um, I can't believe I wait, didn't no, ask I'll introduce questions. it to you because I feel like this is my this is my crusade in this world is to make sides a thing. Well, everybody's pooping and sides a thing. Everybody's pooping and and therefore and sides. therefore sides. So sides are like, yeah, like we're here to come. I well, yeah, we are. I'm so excited that you're naked. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm, I hope that we get married and um we should come with like oral and hands for like really not hands. So oh, lesbians, horrible. lesbians. <laughs> I think sides are just lesbians. We're here for the eye contact. I love eye contact. I love eye contact. Guys. I'm a side. I think, yeah. All lesbians This is why I can like only sleep with people that I'm like in love with. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like eye contact is good because I love you. If you're a stranger, I'm like, um. Ooh, but. Hi. But it can be. If you have like an instant connection. Oh, yeah. Connect. I should say, I don't have to be in love with somebody, but it's like. Yeah. There has to be a vibe there of like, if I look into your eyes, we're like on the same page. But I wonder if the way that gay men have sex where there's like. <laughs> this is how we fuck each was, other. We just, Maddie loses their virginity on the. <laughs> <laughs> that was visceral connection. Your eyes seem so much better than mine. So I don't cute. know what mine look like, but yours are so funny, funnily animated. I also was in a threesome in Fire Also, you Island were very that, much a side in that moment. No, and we were fully. And I was were in like, a threesome where actually that was what that was. I was like, <laughs> there was a threesome where I was actually on the side being like, I hope you guys have fun. Do you, okay, stop me if this is too personal. Did no. you enjoy threesomes? Like, would you do it again? Did you like it? I liked that there was no pressure, stress on me. I was like, mm. it was kind of like, okay, like you have fewer lines here because there's more of us. Like it was like kind of- That's the beauty of building community. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one was asking me to top in a threesome because it was like, we've got, we're in, it's Andrew. Right, it takes a village mm. to come. Yes, yeah, and it does. <laughs> and then raise that child. But you talk about not wanting to have <laughs> sex with someone that you're in love. I feel like gay men, maybe this goes back to the anal thing. Like maybe you don't have anal sex with someone that you're in love with all the time, but gay men have so much like anonymous sex. That I think oftentimes is anal from like the internet. And it's like, is one of the reasons that they can do that because it's like, oh, I don't even fucking know this person. There's like a random person. I don't care mm. if I poop on their penis because they're, some random person I met online. For the bottoms, but for the tops, it's like, you're going to war. Yeah. No, that's true. I have to ask one. We have to find a top. I know. Um, well, that was great gay sex. We're going to go to Maddie. Listener, one of the best ways to support this podcast is to come see me live, okay? It, it's a really great way to just support the whole team and everything that we do here. So get on my text list or my email list. It's international, both of them. AshleyGavin.com, go sign up and I'll literally text you when I'm in your area. So you don't have to hear all these plugs. You can skip right by them. Don't even worry about your city. Just get on one of those two things and I will let you know, okay? Because there's a lot of cities coming and I just remaking this announcement over and over again. We all think it's annoying. You do, I do. Get on the text list, you piece of shit. Maddie, did you have gay sex this week? No. No. What's your excuse, Maddie? My excuse, can I, my, my excuse be that I saw a really good movie and then I read a lot about it? Yeah. And it took a lot of my time. <laughs> yes. I saw um, <laughs> Triangle of Sadness. Oh. What's Triangle it was, of Sadness? It was really good. It's about this like, it sound. is there any, it's pretty straight, I think. But it was, well, it's mostly a, about class. It's like an incredible movie about like class, divide like and how class changes how we act around each other and like money and it's so interesting but it's about like this influencer and her like boyfriend who wrote it? who's a who's, male model who, uh, i don't even it. oh it's the person who did the force majeure the original one not i don't the, know why you know. i asked because if you didn't reply la la land i was gonna have no <laughs> fucking idea oh it's it was, jordan peele great <laughs> because i know like four one director. i know like four filmmakers yeah no it was really good it won like a bunch of awards i think at like sundance and tiff and stuff but it I might wow. make that up, but it had the little, you know, and there's like a little crest with some, you know, leaves on it. And you're like, it yeah, won yeah. some award. I've I'm not going to read what it was. I have yeah. all the info if you need it. Oh, really? Yeah. Was I right? Was it Sundance and Tiff? It won the Palme d'Or, which is almost bigger in some ways, I feel like. What is that? That's like the French film festival that's like real. Not can? Is it can? I think that's, it's like the award from can. Okay. Yeah. It's a really good movie though. Yeah. The trailer feels like a twenty four 
like it's gonna be this existential sad thing. It's not. It's very, very, very funny. Good. It was really funny, and it's I like, like funny. this influencer and her male model boyfriend like get like on this cruise for free. Woody Harrelson plays like a drunk captain. I don't want to say anymore because I don't want to spoil it. But people it takes should, place on a cruise. Mostly, yeah, huh. but also other places. People should really, really watch it. It's so it's good and indie? so funny. Um, it's definitely not like a Marvel movie, but it's no, it's it was probably a decent budget. Yeah, because uh, I was gonna say Woody Harrelson. I don't know. You never know with these exact budgets, but Wikipedia says fifteen point six million, which is pretty small, very small as far as film budgets go. I think indie is technically considered. Thank you, Tish. Like Thank you, Tish. Under twenty million. Mm-hmm. Mm. But I could be wrong on that. Thank you. But it's really good. People should really see it, and it's like brilliant the way that it talks about class and like how people respond to money and like how it changes how we relate to each other. It's, it was just, it was so, so, so good that it was honestly better than sex. <laughs> probably, yeah. probably better than your we'll first time know. with a woman. We'll um, never know. <laughs> no, we'll know, we'll know. We'll There's no pressure. Know. There's thank no pressure, you. son. Thank, thank you. Okay, wait, this is not gay sex, but it is, it's, um, it's actually not anything gay sex, but it's That's a thing fine. I've been doing. Gender could be a gender story. It is a little bit of a gender thing actually, Yeah, which is that I've gotten really into um, running one mile and then watching YouTube videos of ultra marathoners. <laughs> Here's my, I guess, trigger warning for eating disorder stuff. I, That's I, okay. I feel like we're on the topic today. I think like we, wait, trigger warning for eating disorder Cause you disorder mentioned it too. a few times. You didn't really say anything, your relationship. No, I was going to say something kind of detailed that I don't know if people are listening that are like, yeah, sure. don't want to hear like specifically, but I, okay, this is trigger warning. I started running again, but I think it's in a healthy way. My therapist, have I talked about overeaters anonymous on here. No, but I can't wait. Okay. I know I probably should. It's like anonymous. So I won't say anyone, but I'll just say that I, I'm writing a bit of this, but it was really funny to me that my therapist was like, you should go to Overeaters Anonymous. And I went to the website to check out like where meetings are. And the first thing that popped up was a thing that was like, accept all cookies. And I was like, that's how I got here, dude. <laughs> I've accepted every cookie I've ever been offered in my life. Reject, reject the cookies. <laughs> reject the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> then you're thinking about the cookies. You're like, maybe I should have accepted one cookie. Refreshing the page, see if the cookies come back. <laughs> Is it just a list of meetings like in the city that are Yeah, new? and a lot of them are like virtual. I okay. find it pretty helpful. AA is like that. And I went to AA in Chicago because I found one meeting where there were just like a lot of just like interesting, hot, mysterious people. But it could also be the opposite, like <laughs> the dead opposite. And I feel like the meeting should be like, here's the vibe. I've done this. Uh, so I, I haven't talked much about this on the podcast because it's so incredibly vulnerable. But I've done the um, I was in a horrible relationship. And when it when it ended, <laughs> I started being like I started sledding like a lot. And slutting? then slutting, slutting, <laughs> slutting. I was like, God, I'm sorry you hit that You're rock so bottom of weird. going on a hill and having a nice Christmas morning. So I've never mentioned this You're in the pod. You're so innocent and sweet. You went sledding after your breakup. What a great way to, what a great way to just connect with the outside and feel young again, just to feel joy and enthusiasm for something. I highly recommend sledding after a breakup if it is possible. That's you might have to travel for it. Um, That's a good downhill to go down. <laughs> no, but um, she, this woman was still living in my home for a very long time after we broke up. It took me a long time to get her out of the, Oof. I mean, like get her out. I didn't do anything. I was just like, please go, like, please God. So it, we were hooking up with other people and she just really hated that I was seeing people. And so she, she just was, it was like emotionally abusive. And she asked that I go to like sex anonymous or whatever. And I went, whoa, um, and I but learned a lot, you, but I'm not a sex addict, but I definitely, you know what actually happened when I went to sex anonymous, mm. I knew that I wasn't a sex addict, but I realized I, my codependency issues were definitely mm. in the addiction realm. Like, that's really interesting. I feel a similar way about food where I'm like, I, I'm only, I use it to cope when stuff is bad in life. Yeah. But if I have like a good day and I feel emotionally fulfilled and I'm with friends and I'm doing stuff, I come home, I have no cravings. But if I have like a lonely day where I'm by myself and I'm anxious all day, I get home and I just binge until I feel back to like a baseline. Yeah. So it's like interesting that you don't have to be like a full, like there are, I don't know, that addiction is like a range and that those meetings can still be useful even yes, if like- totally. Even if you're I not like so a hard I mean, it was so useful to think of codependency as an addiction. In terms of how I recovered from it, you know, it was, it was nice. very helpful. Wait, yeah. can you say codependency in another 
Well, how would you define that? Like my whole life was wrapped up in another person. Yeah. And feel like you can't be alone. Yeah. And then it can go the opposite. It can feel like, oh, if I leave this person, their life is going to fall apart. Yeah. No, I think I've ex- like a little bit experienced that too. And But yeah. it reminded me, I've been sober for six years, but it reminded me of alcoholism or was with alcohol. When I realized it was an issue, it was like, well, one, I just couldn't stop drinking at, like at all. And then two, it was like, okay, every decision that I make in my life is dictated by alcohol. Yes. Like wh- how yes. is that fitting into our lives? And then I think- I was in a relationship. relationships can be the same, same way. way where it was like, I would book a show first. I would just, how does this affect my relationship with him? How does this affect him? Yeah. And Bad. I think with AA, that's why they tell you to wait a year before you date anybody Yeah, because the dating experience can, first of all, trigger if you have relationship problems that of course can trigger a relapse. Yeah. But also I think like you can get addicted to a relationship. Yeah, it can just yes. kind of transfer to a different vice a little bit, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I have an extremely addictive personality. That's why I don't keep snacks like snacky snacks mm. in my home and I don't drink and I don't smoke and yeah. all those things. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Oh, no, it's, just, it's also just funny too that I'm like, I literally, I quit caffeine. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do any drug. I mean, I have in, you don't I have do before in my life. You're totally I'm off like pussy. a total like You're living in the woods. Like, yeah. And then except that food is the one thing. And then I'm like, it's hard to avoid. Yeah. It's hard to avoid. It's like an easy advice to have, but like, I think also the nice thing about going to those for recovery too, is it makes it non-negotiable because people go, this is an addiction. It's it really easy to be like, I just love my sweets. And then I'm like, no, no, yeah. I like will kill myself in 40 years if I don't, yeah. like, this will literally give me a heart attack. Like it's not good. Yeah. But so the good news is I'm getting out of that. But part of, I love running and I used to be like a really big runner. And um, well, Maddie, now I'm-, I'm a physically big runner. I used to be a big <laughs> runner in the sense that I liked it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I'm trying now. I'm a big runner in a different way. Maddie, but, huge runner, just the biggest absolutely runner, absolutely massive runner. <laughs> <laughs> the earthquakes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't. No, that's okay. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> but so I'm running again. But I Connor's over there being like, ah, <laughs> this is okay. <laughs> no, but I, it's totally okay. I but I go to such extremes that I was like, I'm gonna watch videos of people running like ultra marathon. Wait, is ultra more than a nor- more than 26 miles? Oh, I watched a woman fucking, run a 276 crazy. mile race no. and she only slept for four hours doing the whole thing. But it's like- Wait, the, during what? the race? Yeah, like what? she'll stop and sleep for like half an hour, get up, run more, like through the, the, the mountains of Italy. Like it's just crazy. But I love watching the videos of the women who do it because they are so um, strong and they're so like Mythical. competing with all these men. Not human. Truly, they're like incredible. Really. They truly are. Okay, and part of me, wait, can I just say, I might want to get this cut because I don't know if it's, I'm it's thinking okay, we'll very out. out loud and it's kind of vulnerable and yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. it to. No, I think what you're saying is wonderful. Okay, I don't want this to offend anybody because I never, your gender is so not dictated by the body type that you have. However, for me, my, like having big hips does give, does give me a little bit of like sure. gender dysphoria. And part sure. of me is like, if I really start running and I have like a lankier frame. I think I, I think that'll help my gender dysphoria a little bit. And I don't know if that's fucked up to say because I no, don't want a anyone else to feel like you can feel as masculine as you want in any body. Kate used to talk about this. There is definitely a relationship between because your body and your gender. While your gender, obviously, your body doesn't dictate your gender. You might feel dysphoria because of your body, right? And and how you want to be perceived and yada yada yeah. yada. And obviously, I'm not. I'm cis, but from listening to other people, food affects your body too. So Mm. of course those two things can be linked for, and exercise. Yeah. Like I know a lot of trans men who through exercise, you know, feel like they are, feel more euphoric because they're built, literally building the body that. Totally. And I kind of like, there's something about that that makes me really. I don't know if Nico's ever talked about that, but. There's a lot of shoulder presses. <laughs> I'm at the gym. I'm like, you have to do shoulder presses. <laughs> but it, it just, and I think also there probably are some people who very feel masculine or you know comfortable in a different. But but for me, I think that is where I would feel the most. I at least want to try it out, and I think that's like a nice added benefit to this too. Is like also because for me, part of like the connection I feel to masculinity is like a like pushing yourself go like do like not i don't know just it it all it just feels good gender wise too like running seems like it's gonna so i'll keep updating as the pod goes on but i know i'm leaving this very vague no, 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 but no, no, i hope I i'm like this was getting across what i'm saying so and glad it, you 
you said it. Thanks. But I also want to say there are ways that you can. Um, I'm so not the expert on this. I know that Casey Tanner, Queer Sex Therapy, she uh, they have posted uh, some things about ways that you can get gender euphoria without necessarily being in the perfect body for your yeah. gender. And so there are things that you can do beyond what we're talking about right now. And and I, you guys should seek them out because we are not experts. We are yeah. comedians. And I truly am just talking about like from my perspective too, because it's such a, it's such a like deeply personal thing. There's yeah, like not a one size fits all, but there also is just like exercising and feeling energized and alive. Like, makes you feel like a good. sexual being again. Sexual yeah, being, it's yeah. like just all around good. So like, if I can say anything for that, I know this is like a little heartfelt, but like- How it's, fucking it's dare amazing you, you how, <laughs> It's amazing how good exercise makes you feel and how much and it changes your you mental health. you said you didn't health. have gay sex this week. <laughs> <laughs> good work, accept all the cookies. Thank you. <laughs> um, I was gonna just add a note about sex anonymous or whatever. Um it's not just for people who are addicted to sex. It's like different types of relationship stuff. They call it. You can be like a love addict. You can be a love addict, which I would say is much more close to what I was feeling Mm. or codependency or you're abstaining. You're like, um, afraid you have, there's a lot of fear in sex. So there's lots of stuff if you're looking for a resource. I'm, and again, I'm not an expert. I really only went to like two or three meetings. Yes. I'm not an expert. I'm just fat. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, I think that makes you an expert. <laughs> I've been collecting data and sort of storing it in my body. <laughs> I do feel when I lift weights, I which I do for one hour a day, three times a week, like clockwork, because I decided that if I don't do that, then I'll explode because we build structure into I think that's the eating disorder thing in me where it's like structure. If I, if I, if I do this eat thing I created by, for no reason at all, then the world will make sense to me. Mm. But when mm. I lift, I do feel... A hornier. Yeah. And so I'm not in the highest libido ever, but I am just like, well, I want to side right now. Are you, <laughs> do you go to a gym? Are you fries doing- or mozzarella sticks? Maybe <laughs> some onion rings? Fucking go, baby. Maybe your onion ring. Exactly. <laughs> no, sides. So no, sides. Are you, do you at home or are you? Okay. I go to Equinox, but it's not, <gasps> a, it's not, but it's not my whole personality and it's not important and I so can't fancy. afford it. Don't you, don't you teach there? I do. No, I teach at um, a Pilates place. Man, I want to come to your Pilates class. That's Wait, so fun. I would literally love to. I would we should cry. do content <gasps> at the Pilates class. I would I would love to have you. This has been a long one. So I think we're, what are we at? An hour and a half? Connor, where can people find you? Butt plugs. A fist for the future. <laughs> Never a fist. Um, <laughs> I literally just like the thumbnail of a fist video on the internet will make, will send me into a deep place. I'll be like, um, but <laughs> at Instagram at Connor Janda. Connor what are you working end, on? The boy, you've got your show. Oh, Boys and Club, Club, when does this come Boys out? Club? This comes out. I in, don't know. Okay, well, if this comes out before October 26th, then come to Probably Union not. Hall. Okay, just know that it happened and um, <laughs> half hour Union Hall. And you fucking killed it. And you did your half amazing. hour. Nico did his half hour. Yeah. You guys did the best half hours of all time. Yes. It's and such then, a good show, though. Truly, everyone should go. It's, it's a great so show. Good. Yeah. And then our New York Comedy Fest show is at Club Coming on November 10th, at the day before Veterans Day unintentionally, although that is the biggest boys club. And then that is at <laughs> nine 30 club coming and uh bottom nation merch. And we're having gay sex merch, all that. Uh, Maddie, what are you working on? Fist for the future. Um, at Maddie T Wiener on Instagram has all my stuff in my link tree, but I'm planning to put out a half hour, little self-produced tiny stand-up special thing, uh, in the next, I don't know, six months, hopefully to a year or less, but, um, beautiful. Be, yeah. If you want to check that out, Follow me on Instagram. That's where I put all my stuff. Yeah, follow him out of you piece of shit. Gay thought. Were the holidays tough? They can be tough. This is the time of year. It can be hard. I mean, obviously, not just for queer people, but for everybody. But I think queer people, we are universally united by the discomfort of the holidays. I know personally I'm doing it with my chosen family this year. Not my podcast people. My my New York City chosen family. And uh, if you are or were kind of down because of this time period. My gay thought to you is get on my text list. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) My gay thought for you, my gay thought for you is you are not alone and it can get better and it can get worse and it can oscillate. And 
I'm with you this year in my chosen family uh, tribe. And if you don't have one yet, you will get one. And know that it's going to be okay. This is a difficult period of time, but it'll be over soon. And you'll get some comfort and you'll go back home, your real home, wherever that is. Probably somewhere pretty gay and you'll rail somebody and you'll feel better. And you'll forget about your dad for a minute while you're doing the railing. I mean, I, I hope. It's really up to you what you want to think about. This took a turn. Have a great week, guys.